to 40 years, no Englishman with the name has opened his mouth to me to explain to me what this word means, begotten. It had to be an American. It had to be an American. He was on a visit to Durban and he came on a guided tour of the mosque and I happened to be a guide. And discussing, it came up. I said, now, what does it mean? What are you trying to tell me? What, is, what does it mean to say begotten, not made? He said, it means, this American tells me, it means sired by God. I said, what? He said, no, 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 I don't say that. This is what it means. And believe me, that is what it means. Begotten, not made, means sired by God. I said, is that what you believe that God did? He said, no, I didn't say that. This is what it means. So the Muslim has taken strong exception to such an expression about God, that God begot a son. It's according to your language, your catechism. The Roman Catholic Catechism, the Anglican Catechism, the Methodist Catech Catechism, the Lutheran Catechism. You accept this. This statement, begotten, not made. It's so not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Every doctrine and donkey was made by God. As such, metaphorically, metaphoric, he's the father of everything. But he said, no, Jesus is not like that. He's begotten, not made. I said, please explain. And no explanation. So this was something which the Muslims took exception to. And the 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they threw it out to appease us. Did the Muslims threaten you that, look, if you don't take that word out of the Bible, we won't supply you oil? Did they do that, the Arabs? Did they tell you no oil if you don't take this word out from the Bible? Why did you take it out? Because it was an interpolation. It was not the word of God. The Bible you are carrying, it has this interpolation. And you said this morning, I heard the tape, he said, one word, even one word. He says, if it is not supposed to be there and it's there, he said, the whole book should be thrown away. Whole book. But it's not only one word. There are chunks and chunks of it, according to your revisers. And Brother Swagger tells me in one of his books that if you want to know anything factual, knowledge on any subject, you go to the experts. And he gives an example that if you want to know something about geology, you go to the geologist. If you want to know about the Bible, where do you go? To the barber, shoemaker? No, you go to the Bible experts, the Bible scholars, and they are telling you that this is a fabrication. Then, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Brother Swagat also quotes ad verbatim from the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. If he gives me time, he said, now look, which book? I can open it and show it to you. Which book? Ad verbatim, his quotation. I said, look, but it's not in my Bible. Is this not the word of God? In my Bible, it's not there. Why is it not there? Because your scholars, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, Bible scholars, backed by 50 cooperating denominations. They say this is a, another fabrication, another interpolation. So they also threw it out without any ceremony. So, two. And I give you the ascension. Brother Swaggart quotes in his book, Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Another place, Mark chapter 16, verse 19. I say, it's not in my Bible. I didn't print this. The Jews didn't print it. The Hindus didn't print it. You, Christians, you produced this book. And you're telling me that this is the most up-to-date Bible, going to the most ancient manuscripts. So I look up for Ma Mark chapter 16. I see it ends at verse 8. 9 to 20 is missing. Did I take it out? The Muslims took it out? No. 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating de denominations, they thought it fit that this is another fabrication imposed upon Christendom. And they also threw it out. It's not in my Bible. Therefore, it is not the word of God. If this is the word of God, then that is not the word of God. But I pick up another Bible. Look at this. Look at the 
these two, brother Swagga, identical. Look at that. I see back again, it's inside. What was thrown out? The ascension. There are only two places in, in the Gospels. In the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there are only two places where ascension is mentioned. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. Luke chapter 24, verse 51. Thrown out of this version, thrown out as fabrication, ascension. And yet these Bibles, each and every one of them, they tell us that Jesus, when he went to Jerusalem, he rode the donkey into Jerusalem, Matthew says. Mark says he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. Luke says he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. John says he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. Look, God Almighty didn't miss that out. His son riding the donkey into Jerusalem. When every Tom, Dick, and Harry was riding donkeys into Jerusalem. That he didn't forget. But the ascension is not mentioned not once. And where it is mentioned is now thrown out. But I buy another Bible, identical Bible. That's to the look. Printed by the same printers. I look, and it's there again. What was thrown out, they put it back again. How come? How come? What games are you people playing? Look at this. Back again. This is the 1971 version. Back again. The ordinary people, poor people, they don't know what's going on. What game is being played? Who knows? You read the preface. The learned man, the preacher, he reads the preface, but he won't tell his congregation what he's reading in the preface. In the preface, we are told that individuals and two church denominations, they stampeded them, they forced them that they should put it back. If not, they're going to preach against this book to say, look, don't buy this, buy the King James Version. Don't buy this, buy the King James. The most up-to-date Bible going to the most ancient manuscripts. No, 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 don't touch that. This is the safer one, because it has everything that you want to preach, to catch the fish. It's easier to catch the fish with this than with this, the bait. You know, the fish, you know, uses, like Dale Carnegie, he tells us in his book, how to, uh, he says, how to win friends and inf influence people. He says, I like strawberry and cream. I think most Americans do. But he says, when I go fishing, I put a worm, worm to catch the fish. It's not that I love worms, but this is what the fish loves. So I put worm. So now, if you want to catch fish, you've got to use the right bait. Ascension is now restored to the text, says the preface. Why not God told them so? God doesn't speak freely to those scholars, as freely as he happens to speak, as brother claims, with him. You know, again and again you read, God comes to him, speaks to him, and he says, son, again, son, which he didn't address his own son, Jesus, in inverted commas. He never called him son. He speaks in the third person. He says, this is my son in whom I will please. But to Brother Swagad, he says, my son, my son, not so freely. So I says, look, this is not the word of God. We say, playing, they said that the church groups and they, by the meantime, while this was being discovered, they made a net profit of $15 million on this version before they could remove it, $15 million. Brother Swagat has written some beautiful books, beautiful books. Incest, pornography, homosexuality, alcohol, Sodom and Gomorrah. And I can't imagine myself doing any better. Beautiful writings. Incest. This is the dark stain on our society, American society. The dark stain on American society. It has reached epidemic proportions. Incest. In my country, the whites of South Africa, according to statistics, 8% of all white people, they commit incest. 8%, one in every 12, is committing incest. I don't know what's the percentage here, but Brother Swaggart tells us that it has reached epidemic proportions in your mighty country, America. And he gives examples from the Holy Bible that there are 10 cases of incest in the Holy Bible. I didn't know that. I knew that in the first book of the Bible,